Cheryl Hughes, en route to her doom. Today I'm going to review The Night Stalker from 1972. The Night Stalker was based on the novel The Kolchak Papers, also known as The Kolchak Tapes, by Jeff Rice. The Night Stalker came out in 1972. It was followed by a sequel called The Night Strangler. It was followed a year later called Chuck the Night Stalker the TV series. Fortunately it only lasted one season. It featured 20 episodes and the Night Stalker also inspired Chris Carter to make the X-Files. He kind of based the X-Files on this film. It was the highest rated TV movie on US television. It was ABC's movie of the week. It got a 33.2 rating. It only cost $450,000. Runs only 74 minutes. It was directed by John Llewellyn Moxie. Richard Matheson did the teleplayer. It was produced by Dan Curtis. It stars Darren McGavin as Cal Kolchak, Carol Lindley as Gail Foster, Simon Auckland as Tony Vecino, Barry Atwater as the vampire. Hey, Phil, is Christopher Lee in the bugger? No bones. Chris Flea only played Dracula in the Hammer films. This isn't the Hammer film. Ah, he must have thought he was too good for the bugger. The pompous bloody git. <laughs> Glad you're having a good time. So this film was a massive success in 1972. And the film focuses on Polchak's character. He works for the press. He's a reporter. And there's a vampire killing these um, girls at night. And he, he's trying to get the story, but no one will believe him. When he says it's a vampire, he just gets laughed at. But um, he knows that some it's seriously wrong that there is a vampire at work so that's what the film's basically focusing on it's about people's beliefs being open-minded to certain things so Kolchak's character's more open-minded than the other characters his character represents the conspiracy theorist but in this case he's correcting the the mainstream media is wrong that can happen in real life as well so I can see how Chris Carter got his inspiration for the X-Files by watching this film. Because Kolchak's character is like Mulder in the X-Files, so very similar. Also an interesting fact is uh, Sylvester McCoy's Doctor, the seventh Doctor in Doctor Who. He kind of based his costume on this character, Kolchak. He's, he's got the same hat and everything. Hey, the only bloody good thing about Sylvester McCoy's Doctor was his fucking hat. <laughs> So the film starts off where Kolchak's recording on, on this tape what's happened. So you, you get Kolchak's voiceover throughout the film as, as he's um, identifying all the different victims that are getting attacked. The film like ends with him uh, clicking the stop uh, button on the tape recorder. So that's interesting how, how, the, how they did that. And with him being a reporter he has like witty one-liners. It's a bit like the character in The Day of the Earth Caught Fire. That was about um, reporters and they, they were witty throughout the film. So Kolchak's got all these uh, really good one-liners and stuff. <laughs> oh baby, you're gonna love New York City. Honey, after the story hits the new services with my byline. Oh, and... us married? Yes, us <laughs> married! <laughs> Don't look now, baby. Hey, it's funny how old fellas get young lasses in these hard horror films. But there's a sequel straight after this film. It's good, not as good as this one, but it's still decent. And they also did a TV show with 20 episodes, which I don't class it as good as the two TV movies, but it's still okay. <laughs> Some right turkeys in it, though. What I like about this film is the location, like Las Vegas in the 1970s. It looks really good. And although this is a TV movie, it does like um, look quite high budget for a TV movie. 
towards the end of the film there's loads of tension when Kolchak's in the vampire's house. He's trying to find uh, like the vampire's grave. Unfortunately for Kolchak, the, the, the vampire's driving the car and he comes back home. So there's great tension towards the end of this TV movie. And the actual vampire looks good as well. I think it I think it's more like a Christopher Lee sort of vampire. You don't seem to turn into bats or anything. And when, when, when he's fighting these policemen, it, it's like um, physical. He doesn't like turn to smoke or anything. The vampire looks really weird as well. He's got like, like contact lenses, red eyes. His forehead looks weird. So a really effective vampire actually. The ending's quite shocking actually and sad because Kolchak went through all that to stop the vampire and he thinks he's got this great story. But the, the press and, and the government and everything suppress his story. Then they, they even tell him he has to leave town, even though he was correct. So they said if he doesn't leave town, they'll, they'll do him for murder. Even though they know it was a vampire. Really, um, not like really angry that uh, he went through all that for now. And it just goes to show like what these governments and that do. They still do it. Like they'll, they'll withhold things and suppress stories and everything. And even if um, like Kolchak represents a conspiracy theorist, like even if they're correct, that they'll do everything in the power to uh, cancel them out. So this story is more relevant today than ever. Like we cancel culture. Like say if Kolchak was um, a character today, he'd he'd have like a YouTube site and be cancelled by um, the authorities so it, it's interesting that this story is like from the 70s and it, it's more relevant today with freedom of speech than ever before so all the loose ends have been gathered together and tied into a pretty knot right around the neck of guess who after i left town i began putting notices in the personal columns of newspapers from san francisco to st louis until i ran out of money that is so far i've received no answers but I, I'll keep trying, even though I don't think I'll ever find Gail Foster again. So I, I love American TV movies. They've made some brilliant ones. I've, I've got a book about uh, all the TV movies. Excellent book. So I'll have to be, start reviewing uh, some more TV movies from the, the 70s. I think this is probably one of the best, though. A pity there wasn't a little bit more money spent on it, because you can tell it's like low budget. But apart from that, I think it's excellent. Really well done and quite clever. So out of 10, I'll definitely give this one 9. 9 out of 10. <laughs> almost gets top marks. But I don't think bones feel like you. Top marks feel. Get the sequel reviewed sometime. The Night Strangler. Okay, everybody, bye. <laughs> See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. <laughs> bye. 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 Try to tell yourself, wherever you may be, in the quiet of your home, in the safety of your bed, try to tell yourself it couldn't happen here.